Hello everyone. I'm back again with another theory. This time I am going to expand on what I said in my earlier video. Today we are going to talk about BTS's comeback map as well as the HYYH era or more specifically, the run music video. Let me just deviate from the topic for a second because we are getting three music videos. Not one, not two, but three. Holy shit I'm so excited. On top of that, we did not clown ourselves. Shadow and Ego are actually part of the whole thing. Thank god. I spent two hours waiting for the Prida links to drop at 12am kit but that never happened. Instead, my sister woke me up at 7 in the morning, screaming her head off because the Prida link dropped. Both of us screaming surely gave my mom a mini heart attack but I managed to convince her to let me Prida the album. And man am I excited. Okay now back to the topic. Now, the time leading up to the release of the album has been divided into four phases. During phase 1, we get the trailer for Shadow. During phase 2, the trailer for Ego will be released. During phase 3 the trackless will be revealed. Notice how it will be revealed exactly a month after the lead single comes out. And finally during phase 4, the album will be released. So, why these faces? As I said in my previous video, according to Jung, there are four stages of life. The athlete phase, the warrior phase, the statement phase, and the spirit phase. The athlete is the phase in our lives when we are at our most self-absorbed. Of the four stages, it tends to be the least mature. It is characterized by being obsessed with our physical bodies and appearance. The athlete phase can be narcissistic, critical, or even both. Moving forward in our lives, we reach the warrior phase. This is where we begin to take on responsibilities and get the desire to conquer the world. We start to formulate objectives that we want to accomplish and the vanity of the athlete phase begins to fade. The warrior phase is really characterized by the struggles in our lives that early adulthood can throw at us. When the warrior phase in our lives is coming to an end, we find ourselves asking, what have I done for others? Your focus shifts from your personal achievements to accomplishing goals based on improving other people's lives. The last stage is the spiritual stage. According to Jung, this will be the last stage of our life. A stage where we realize that none of those three stages are really who and what we are. We realize we are more than our body. We are more than our possessions. More than our friends. Our country and so on. We come to the realization that we are divine beings. Spiritual beings having a human experience. And not human beings having a spiritual experience. We now know this is not our home, and we are not what we thought we are. We are in this world but not of it. We are now able to observe ourselves from a different perspective. We are now capable of stepping out of our own mind, out of our own body and understand who we really are, to see things the way they are. What if each phase, as shown in the comeback map, represents each of these stages of life? Shadow is coming out during phase 1. In Freudian psychology, the id is kind of like the equivalent of the shadow. The id is the primitive and instinctual part of the mind that contains sexual and aggressive drives and hidden memories. The id operates on the pleasure principle which is the idea that every wishful impulse should be satisfied immediately, regardless of the consequences. When the id achieves its demands, we experience pleasure when it is denied we experience unpleasure or tension. Sounds a lot like the athlete phase, no, the ego, on the other hand, comprises the organized part of the personality structure that includes defensive, perceptual, intellectual cognitive, and executive functions. Conscious awareness resides in the ego, although not all of the operations of the ego are conscious. According to Jung, the ego four functions, sensation, thinking, feeling, and intuition. Jung suggested that people start life developing one of these four ego functions, and at various stages throughout their life may develop others, the undeveloped ones having less effect on their cognition. Typically, the second ego function might become developed during adolescence, and the development of a third accounts for midlife crises. The ego kind of connects to the second phase of life. In the Speak Yourself final VCR, we see Jungkook making a butterfly from his hands and its shadow falls on the wall for shadows to be exact. Now we know butterflies were seen by Jung as a symbol of transformation. But also notice the colors of the shadows of the butterfly. Blue, green, yellow, and red. According to Jung, these four colors symbolized the four ego functions. Red symbolizes feeling, yellow symbolizes intuition, blue symbolizes thinking, 
and green symbolizes sensation. If you look closely at the 7 in the comeback map, it also seems to consist of these colors. We can see the blue, yellow and green and a very very light almost pink color, which I guess they used instead of red because it would screw them. Anyways, you noted that the unconscious often tends to reveal itself most easily through a person's least developed, or inferior ego function. The encounter with the unconscious and development of the underdeveloped function, s, thus tend to progress together. The process of individuation generally takes place in the last half of life. While the first half of life is devoted to making one's way and establishing oneself in the world, the last half can be a time of psychological development, of moving toward awareness, integration, wholeness. The barriers to individuation which we must seek to explore and resolve are contained in our shadow personality, those qualities that one would rather not see in oneself, as well as unrealized potentials. Because they are repressed such beliefs and feelings are typically unconscious. They influence our entire lives, tell us what we can and cannot do, and drive our behaviors. Even when we're conscious of them, we tend to hide them because we're ashamed or embarrassed. We don't want anyone to know that we feel unworthy of love or that we're not good enough so we try to suppress such beliefs and deny them. Being opposite the persona, the shadow is not generally acknowledged or accepted by the ego, but when integrated, rather than repressed, it can be very useful to the individual in seeing or realizing the full aspect of the inner self. This energy can be redirected positively into waking life. For example, a positive side of the shadow is to provide strength to an intimidated person. In my previous video, I spoke about how this could be a continuation of the high era. I think we should look a little into the run MV and try to find some hints. The MV begins with Jin surrounded by darkness and falling into water with his eyes closed. I think this represents him tapping into his unconscious. For example, by dreaming, we then see birds flying. In alchemy, birds symbolize the human soul undergoing spiritual development. We then have the boys hanging out and Ti-Hyung spray painting Jin with an X. On the walls behind them, we can see a few sentences written. The one which immediately stood out to me was Wasted Youth and Enter the Void. Wasted Youth is actually the name of an album by the metalcore band for the Fallen Dreams. Interesting name right? This is the tracklist of the album. The song pretending is about fake friendships. There was also a band called Wasted Youth and one of their songs is called All My Friends Are Dead. I couldn't find the lyrics from this song anywhere but the title tells you a lot. Enter the Void is a film about a young American drug dealer who gets shot and has an out-of-body experience. In the movie, there are references to a book called The Tibetan Book of the Dead. It's basically about how the spirit of a dead person sometimes stays among the living until it begins to experience nightmares, after which it attempts to reincarnate. Could it be that Jin is the spirit? It makes sense especially because he does keep experiencing the same nightmare over and over again. The director of the movie said that the whole movie is a dream of someone who read the Tibetan Book of the Dead, and heard about it before being shot by a gun. It's not the story of someone who dies, flies and is reincarnated. It's the story of someone who is stoned when he gets shot and who has an intonation of his own dream. The director also leaves open the possibility that Oscar's life starts over again in an endless loop, due to the human brain's perception of time. Hum. Interesting. This idea of eternal recurrence has also been addressed by Friedrich Nietzsche in his book Thus Spoke Zarathustra. Everything straight lies. All truth is crooked. Time itself is a circle. This, along with the symbols of time like clocks and the hourglass we have seen is also quite interesting. In the run MV, we also see a card with a butterfly on it. This is also a recurring symbol. We have seen it a lot in the VCRs recently. The colors Ty uses while vandalizing are also interesting. We see blue, yellow, red and green, which are the colors related to the four ego functions. Now look at this picture carefully. When I was watching the run MV and saw this, I almost had a heart attack. Yeah, that's correct. We see the word ego written on the wall of the photo booth. Okay, then we see Namjoon blowing a dandelion. A dandelion can be seen as a symbol of dreams because when we blow on the fluff, we close our eyes and make a wish. In the MV, the guys often look at the sky with serious expressions on their faces. Why? I will talk about the symbolism of sky later in the video. When the guys are in the tunnel and vandalizing the cars, we see more symbolism. Tunnels symbolize the passage from one phase of life to another. 
Tunnels in dreams can also represent a pathway to the unconscious. They can also symbolize rebirth as in the birth canal. A lot of these symbols are related to Jung's four stages of life. At the end of the music video, Jin comes back up from the water. Was everything he saw a dream? And was the whole concept of the latest album decided years ago? I also want to take a quick look at the Wings short films. In Begin, Jungkook is seen sleeping and then seems to be having a nightmare. He is then transported to another place. I think this represents his unconscious mind. As usual, we see symbols like birds, fire, and water, rain. Next, we have Lai. It seems that Jimin, too, is in a place that represents his unconscious as we see him fall into the bathtub, similarly to the way Jin fell into the water in the run MV, and then he is transported to another place. In fact, it seems like every member is actually either dreaming or somehow present in their unconscious mind. In Stigma, we also see Tai in a dark place. Similarly in Reflection and Mama, the boys seem to access their unconscious. In Awake, we see Jin standing in front of a painting of a word. Now the wallpaper here is interesting. The creature on the wallpaper is Abraxas, who I spoke about in my previous video. Abraxas is representative of the driving forces of individuation as he contains dualities or opposites within him like the persona and the shadow, good and bad, etc. Jin also seems be in his unconscious mind. However, unlike the others, he seems to know be aware of the fact that he is not in reality. This can be seen as he touches the mirror and it ripples. And also the fact that he has pictures of all the symbols that appear in the other boys' short films. It almost seems as if Jin is the only person here and the boys are a part of him. Perhaps different aspects of his personality. Connecting this to Epiphany, we see as Jin repeats the same things over and over, as if he is still stuck in a loop. This also reminds me of the HYYH era and the BU as we know he kept reliving the same day over and over again to save the boys. Was he still living the same day? So what exactly are the guys trying to tell us? Is the story going to continue from Epiphany? Will we finally learn whether Jin saves the guys? And are they even real? Or are they just aspects of his personality? Is he reliving the same day over and over so that he can perhaps save himself? But let's look at the GDA VCR from this angle. I identified more archetypes in the VCR which make a lot of sense. First, we see the desert. The archetype of a desert symbolizes death, weakness, and hopelessness. Next we see Namjoon with the Thesis, indicating that he represents Dionysus. Many believed Dionysus and Hades, the god of the underworld, to be the same. Dionysus not only represents gluttony, irrationality, and extravagance, but also death. What's interesting is that he symbolized wine, which can be seen to have a double nature. Wine can be man's benefactor and man's destroyer, man's blessing sometimes his ruin. It is also believed that Dionysus was born many times. This leads itself to the idea of eternal recurrence. Okay, next we see Jin with some pearls and water in the background. Long ago, the Greeks believed that pearls were made of the tears of gods. White pearls also signify new beginnings. Water symbolizes death and rebirth, timelessness and eternity. Here is a quote by Jung that sums it up. Water is the commonest symbol for the unconscious. The lake in the valley is the unconscious, which lies, as it were, underneath consciousness, so that it is often referred to as the subconscious, usually with the pejorative connotation of an inferior consciousness. Water is the valley spirit, the water dragon of Tao, whose nature resembles water a yang in the yin. Therefore, water means spirit that has become unconscious. Okay, next we see a snake and then Jimin with snakes on his head. Although snakes do symbolize corruption and lust, they are also believed to signify the unconscious. The fact that we see Jimmy with snakes on his head is also significant as they almost seem to symbolize his unconscious mind, especially when we also see water in the background. The fog around the water makes it seem as if the unconscious is concealed. Jung also said the commonest dream symbol of transcendence is the snake. Next is Yungi. We see fire around him. Fire symbolizes life, rebirth, and light. Pretty straightforward I think. Next is Hobi. He is seen holding grapes. In the Bible, grapes were seen as symbols of altruism. If we connect this to the four stages of life, we can see that this is the third stage. When we begin to help others, we are being altruistic by doing that. The sky behind him could represent peace or even the state of his mind or dreams and the unconscious. 
Now, Jungkook is surrounded by nature and we can see some tree branches behind him. According to Jung, the earth or nature also had a soul. It is not merely matter but spirit. And what is the psyche? It is the soul. So, it may also represent the unconscious mind. Lastly, we have Ti Hyung. Ti Hyung is the only one who is surrounded by darkness. Or rather, a dark starry sky. Almost as if he is in space. This could relate to the last stage of life. The spirit stage. When we realize that we are divinity and are beyond our accomplishments, possessions, and status. In a dream, space also represents the collective conscious. So we find many connections to Jungian archetypes. Namjoon also said this in the beginning of the VCR. A dream is the small hidden door in the deepest and most intimate sanctum of the soul, which opens to that primeval cosmic night that was soul long before there was conscious ego and will be soul far beyond what a conscious ego could ever reach. Sums it up pretty well doesn't it? Let's also take a look at the meaning of the number 7. It is a highly spiritual number for many reasons. The number is a symbol of spiritual awakening and enlightenment 7 is also seen as the perfect number that holds creation and the in the old testament the world was created in six days and god rested on the seventh creating the basis of the seven day week we use to this day in the new testament the number seven symbolizes the unity of the four corners of the earth with the holy trinity number seven also resonates with the vibrations and energies of the collective consciousness According to me, Mo 7 will be divided into two parts, shadow and ego. The first part will feature things related to the shadow, while the second part will feature things related to the ego. There may also be another album released later, which will compile all of the messages from Persona, shadow and ego to show the process of individuation. And that's all I have for you all today. I will definitely post another video when shadow comes out so stay tuned for that. And if you found this video helpful, Please like and subscribe because Jimin said so. You can also check out my previous video in which I spoke about connections to blood sweat and tears.